Greetings Augies worldwide and welcome to Ask Dave episode 204. We're going to talk today about a clock kit that's GPS controlled that comes from QRP Labs. I put it together uh, in an evening, put both of them together, uh, very simple kits to do. The reason I did that is because I have a station clock and it's a little tiny thing about yay big and um, unfortunately I zapped it when I was using um, one of these handhelds and I was testing it and I got the antenna too close to the station clock. Uh, usually when the thing went haywire I would just recycle the power and it would be okay. but. Uh, it did not this time. It, it refused to come up. So I think what I did was I completely reset the IC that has the firmware in it for the clock. So what to do? Well, I thought that I would purchase not only a new clock kit, it was only 19 bucks, but also another GPS kit because I was using the GPS kit that came with the clock when the two came to me together. I was using that to run my whisper uh, transmitter. Uh, and so that it would be absolutely accurate on the time and everything. And um, so I thought, well, you know, it is possible to, with TTL logic to parallel two outputs, one of the clock, one of the whisper transceiver, uh, or its transmitter actually. But what I thought to keep the two independent, uh, I would get another GPS kit too. So I pulled the two together. And that's what we're gonna do is we're gonna construct the kit uh, during this video and I'll try and give you some tips on uh, kit construction and stuff like that as we go. So let's take a look at the slides. I ran into a problem with my station clock which was a little kit that I had built uh, from QRP Labs. This over here is my whisper transmitter and this is my new clock, the one that I fixed. My old one that I had set up here um, would show the station time very, very nicely. Uh, it had uh, the day and the time in UTC. This is just a little bit of information about the GPS satellites, a GPS discipline clock. Um, and I used a handheld radio too close to it and uh, zapped it, you know, and usually I just had to disconnect it, reconnect it, and it would work fine when I did something stupid like that. But then there was a time when it would not. So um, I had to get another one of these, and I decided at the same time I would get it its own GPS receiver because at the time I had the one GPS receiver and was trying to feed both that and the uh, whisper and I would do either or but not both at the same time although it is capable of that but in any event I needed a new station clock my GPS station clock is this is where I operate here and uh, it's just nice to glance over here and know exactly where I glance I'm going to see the UTC date and time so um, I went to um, QRP labs it's the very last item on this particular page right here, uh, the clock. And what um, Hans Summers has done uh, with QRP Labs is this is a board right here that is actually used for uh, whisper. Um, and he's just kind of taken parts off of it, changed the programming to just turn it into a, a plain old fashioned clock. And it is not expensive. Uh, for a kit, it's $20 to get a clock that will always forever be within about a microsecond of uh, real time. So I had to order the GPS kit too. That was a little bit more expensive, but still between the two, I'm coming up with a very nice station clock. So this is the uh, uh, receiver kit uh, for the GPS. It comes with the actual uh, little chip that does all the hard work pre-soldered to the board because it's a surface mount device and uh, Hans ships all of his kits with the surface mount device already mounted. So they came in little plastic bags like this and this tray that they're on, you'll see it here in, in the next uh, video, this is the uh, next uh, slide, uh, it's a little cookie tray for baking cookies but it keeps parts from rolling away. 
and keeps everything uh, nicely in good order here. Now, when Hans ships the kits, uh, he's got little bags of things. Uh, this is uh, for another unit, and that bag had this and all these other parts in it. Uh, the one thing that he added was the clock firmware right here. And uh, so there are some extra components that would be used for the other kit that are not used here. So as it turns out, we'll have some parts left over, which I'll show you. This is a little two-line display. It will support a four-line display. And uh, I'll get one someday, I guess. I could use the third and fourth lines for like local time and, and uh, more GPS info or something like that. Um, it does come with a socket for the IC, uh, which is nice because then you can change it uh, if you want to uh, take it out, put it in a programmer and, and uh, flash the new firmware or something like that. I don't have that equipment to do that, or I would have done it with that other kit to see if I could uh, resurrect it. Now I have this really cool device here that you see down in here that uh, will hold the circuit board. Uh, you put this here and you slide this this way until there's a little bit of spring tension. And then there's a knob where you can tighten it. And that holds that board so that you can rotate it around um, and get to the front and back of it. And it will hold very steady while you're trying to solder things. This is a link to that at Amazon, amazon.to slash 2, capital K, small s, small n, cap x, cap p, small e. If you go there, it'll take you right to where you can order it and um, it's also set up you'll pay the normal price for it but i'll get a few pennies of that to help support um, ask dave okay let's keep going and mount that first item on here uh, one of the things that it, it doesn't say to do this but i picked this up uh, from another kit building exercise you put the socket into the board and i held it in 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 place with a piece of tape then you solder one connection. Okay, then while holding on to this side of the board, you melt that connection again and make sure that that board will snap right down flat on the circuit board. The next one you do is this one. So you've got tacked in both corners and then you can proceed with uh, soldering the other ones on the other side and uh, you can see that done right here this row of solder here and here is for the integrated circuit uh, these are some little items mounted on here and you can see that they're through hole components they come through this is the solder side and um, you can see them sort of sticking up here uh, you kind of bend the leads apart so that the, the device will stay in place, turn the board over in the holder, and uh, then you come in uh, with your cutters uh, and gently clip these off about there. It's a good idea to put a finger on top of that before you cut so that it doesn't go flying halfway across the room. Um, as it turns out in this clock, you're going to need them for jumpers anyway. But you don't want to get those in an eye, nor do you want to get it on the rug where somebody's going to step on it. I've had this pair of cutters for probably 40 years, uh, and they just last forever. The only real tools I used putting this together were the soldering iron and um, a pair of needle nose pliers, or long nose pliers, I guess, technically. Uh, these cutters and a, a little small screwdriver and that was enough in the holder enough to construct the whole thing i have a temperature controlled soldering iron uh, that i bought on the recommendation of an augie and it works really really well um, also if you go to my amazon page on my website that shows you the amazon links i have there is one in there for a similar uh, soldering uh, tool less than a hundred dollars uh, you get a very nice tool. 
So here we are with a few more components on. We've got a little switch down here, uh, 20 megahertz crystal that's kind of running the whole thing. Um, these uh, capacitors, this is a variable resistor that you use to set the uh, uh, brightness of the display so that you can get it in just right. Another switch over here. Between these two switches, you can program the clock. The rest of these components out here and so on are used for the whisper uh, transmitter. This is now, we have to put the legs on right here because what we're going to do is attach the display. Right here are the little holes where the display is going to be connected. So what we're going to do is put in this. This is a mated socket and plug okay the plug is going to get soldered to the display board and the socket is going to remain on the main clock circuit board so uh, here now we've got the top piece of the sandwich on this is just held in between and we're going to solder all of these and then solder all of the equivalents down here again you can solder just one Make sure everything is just where it should be, and then solder the rest of them. And this is what it looks like from the other side. You see these have not yet been soldered. As it turns out, these four in the middle aren't used for the two-line display, so you don't have to solder them, but go ahead and do it, because you may need it. Uh, there are jumpers here, here, and here, which are made from clipped-off leads on the other side. So we're getting very close to finished. It's these two boards, the display here and the guts out here. Now, if you put this in a case, you can parallel these two switches out to the front of the case. That way you don't have to reach in and grab those switches. Uh, the last little thing that is attached are these little header boards here and here. This one is for power. Uh, that's positive 5 volts. That's negative 5 volts. Uh, this one right here is the one pulse per second from the GPS, the data word from the GPS uh, ground, and this is 5 volts right here. Now, here we are with all those parts completed, all of this stuff soldered in here. This is essentially the complete kit. As you can see, there aren't very many parts needed, and all these other extra things here are what you would put in if you had different firmware and were building the whisper transmitter. I also have that whisper transmitter. Now, when you apply power, it goes into the diagnostic mode, and this shows that everything is working, um, and you adjust the uh, potentiometer on the back so that you can see this clearly. Note that the uh, light uh, that is the backlight on this LCD is quite bright. Uh, there are some instructions in there if you don't want something so bright uh, where you can uh, uh, kind of trim it back a little bit. You have to put in a resistor which they don't supply which would dim that a little bit. These are the parts that are left over. There's a resistor, there's all these sockets and plugs and um, there are three capacitors, variable resistor, a transistor. Now we're going to use this one and this one at the end of uh, suitable cables. I've got a cable uh, that's four wires wrapped with the uh, ground, so it's a shielded cable. Uh, and I've had that wire sitting in my junk box for probably 20 years, but finally found a use for it. Uh, we're going to use we're going to use these to put in a cable between these. So this will be between the GPS and the clock. And it's about six feet of cable. So I can uh, move the GPS to wherever is a good spot for it in the room and then put the clock where I want it. So this is what it looks like uh, without the GPS. Uh, it's just starting to count the seconds from the time it was turned on. And the rest of this data will be filled in by the GPS. Now before we talk about the GPS kit, could you take a moment to go out of full screen mode and click on like 
and click on subscribe. Okay, when you click on subscribe, there will be a little bell icon come up and click on that too. Um, these are very important to YouTube to know which videos to recommend, uh, whether they're liked and whether people subscribe to the channel. If you would li prefer not to get constant uh, notifications every time I put up a video, you can leave the bell unclicked. But it's a better idea to click that bell so you know that I've got something coming up. You'll get an email about it and uh, you'll know whether it's something that you might want to go take a look at, which I hope that you will. I have 52,000 subscribers right at the moment. I'm growing at a rate of about 1,000 a month. Now, this is the um, GPS receiver kit. It's got more parts, not a lot more parts, but it's got more parts. We've got a little inductor down here. This is a diode, uh, resistors. This is a capacitor. It's an electrolytic capacitor. This is the other electrolytic capacitor another inductor, some resistors, little capacitors here, and a battery of all things. Okay, and this is a voltage regulator that is required to take the 5 volts at which the clock runs down to the 3.3 volts that this wants to see. So we put this in the holder right here, and we're going to get ready. The, again, the surface mount component is already pre-mounted. Hans does that with his kits to make them easier so the actual parts to be mounted are all through-hole components, which I have laid out over here. Notice again the cookie sheet so that things can't uh, accidentally roll off the side of the desk. Uh, very handy. I picked up that idea from uh, the Dayton area where they were having uh, some construction projects for youth on the air. This is the first set of components and uh, what these are are resistors on the other side. They're laying down flat on the board. You put the leads through and then bend them back and then you can solder several components at once. It makes it very handy. So these will need to be trimmed. After a few more components besides that, and see I've put components over here too. One thing you need to make sure as you put these in that they're all soldered properly, okay? That it doesn't look like the wire is sticking out of the ball of solder without connecting or that there's too little solder or something like that. Also, when you clip those leads, I had a couple leads that I clipped and they touched each other and that wasn't a good idea. I caught that on inspection and pushed those leads apart. This is what it looks like on the other side. We've got uh, the resistors, the inductor, uh, inductor over here, capacitors, three capacitors there, more resistors, and these uh, capacitors, the electrolytics, are used for filtering. We're going to put in the voltage uh, regulator right here. And here it is in, right here. Okay, and this is, it, we've got a little bit more to do down on the bottom. This is the patch antenna. This whole area right here underneath it is a solid copper ground plane underneath the paint on the board. Okay, and this right here connects through to the other side to that receiver. And um, Hunt suggests that you put these LEDs on this side because this side will be facing up. Um, or toward your window or whatever works. And the red one is on to indicate power, so it's a pilot light. The uh, green one flashes whenever there's a one time per second pulse coming out of the GPS receiver. And this is a very, very accurately timed pulse, and it is what the clock synchronizes to. Then, after every pulse, the yellow uh, diode, uh, yeah, L LED glows to indicate that there's a data word that's coming down from the GPS that will have the actual time and ephemeris information and location information and so on will be in there. So you'll see the red shining all the time. You'll see the green pulse once per second and right after the green pulses the yellow one comes on for a little bit while it sends that data word down. The baud rate here is 9600 
uh, bits per second. It's, it's not very much. It doesn't need to be uh, very much. Um, here you can see where I have soldered the, uh, that patch antenna through right here. If you were to put instead in here a little SMA connector so you could put your antenna in a different place, you have to put an additional inductor and resistor in place that are not supplied. Uh, and you can see here the scotch tape that held this thing down until that was uh, soldered in place. Another thing this has is a battery. This is a little rechargeable battery and when the clock is not powered this battery will go into here to keep the ephemeris in memory. Uh, that way when you've got the uh, thing off it can sort of keep track of kind of where the satellites are, it's just ticking over. And then that way the first time you turn it, or the second time you turn it on will be very quick. The very first time you turn this thing on, it actually takes several minutes to catch that satellite. But because of that battery, you won't have that problem so much again. Here is the finished clock. You can see the cable that I used here and uh, this is a little 5 volt regulator. Uh, we've got 12 volts coming in, 5 volts coming out, and that 5 volts comes in to the clock. And then the 5 volts also goes over here, and it's regulated. This part up here uh, works at 5 volts, this part at 3.3. Now what these components are for here is to do a conversion of the data that comes out of here uh, to TTL logic, 5 volt logic, and uh, that comes down into here, makes it easier. Now, this shows the time uh, UTC from the GPS, and it says the 1st of June at 3 in the morning. Well, that's actually on the 31st of May here, uh, so it's nice for your log to have the date and time in UTC. And so with this, I get my station clock back and I have my whisper transmitter working all the time and I've got a separate GPS receiver for each one. I don't have to have uh, two GPS receivers. The way TTL logic works, you could connect that one uh, GPS receiver both to the clock and to the whisper transmitter, but I've chosen not to, done that, uh, not to do that. I just want uh, the two to be independent of each other. All right, the end of that is that I have my station clock back. It's nice when I'm doing single sideband because I'm usually not entering directly into the log. I've got a paper log and when I enter uh, those in the paper log I can just glance right over here and there is the UTC date and the UTC time to a tiny fraction of a second uh, and I'm ready to go, so I'm delighted I've got my station clock back. So that's it for this time. Uh, thank you so much for being Augies. And uh, if you would like to contribute uh, financially to this channel to keep it going, keep it running, keep things happening, allow me to buy little kits so I can put them back together, uh, then you can uh, provide a contribution or funding uh, to this channel. I'm not a charity, but so it's not... I don't like to use the word contribution. It's funding uh, for the channel. I pay taxes on all of this, and uh, that way things can keep going. By the way, announcement, I am going to the Reno Ham Fest, which will be at the end of July. I'm also planning this year to get out to Pacificon, and um, I'm going to try again for the Albuquerque Convention. So really looking forward to seeing you. I had the opportunity to talk with lots of Augies at Dayton. It was just a wonderful trip that we had together. Um, I, we got out of there a couple days before all those tornadoes swept through. And uh, um, Loretta and I express our deepest sympathy to those who lost their homes. We understand that the Hara Arena was damaged. That's where the, the uh, convention used to be held. And that one of the Dayton uh, Hamvention volunteers lost his home in that. And we send our condolences, best wishes, and uh, prayers are with you. And until next time, 73.